has a patient who has a contralateral femtab bypass with stenosis detected uh, in the midgraft, the distal anastomosis, and some constriction in the left common femoral. So you approach this using ultrasound guidance from the right groin, air exchange for a while. You always check the wire position, make sure you know where the wire is going. They have habits of finding places you don't even know exist. Uh, we'll then introduce uh, a, a, a flush catheter, a flush catheter allows you to do in the autogram. In this case, we'll use any contra catheter. Contra catheter, these flush catheters have multiple holes in the end that allows you to spray dye across the entire flow field, so you get a beautiful picture like that. Uh, this is the contra catheter is now used to deflect a uh, floppy glide wire down the opposite side. You pull the catheter down uh, so that it engages in that bifurcation. And then you're going to advance that wire. It'll frequently it'll end up in the internal iliac, in which case you need to redirect it. Here you can see all the clips in the groin because there have been multiple operations. Um, and the wire, uh, you want to get enough wire uh, that we can um, exchange a catheter. In this, in this case, the contra catheter followed over it. It allows us to do an initial arteriogram. Shows you where the bypass graft is coming off. We can see the bypass graft going down uh, doing a superimposing top of the SFA there, uh, and really uh, you you can see there's a stenosis in the in the graft itself and at the distal anastomosis. We're going to come back and and treat those and two vessel runoff. Again, vein grafts we always put in a, a graft surveillance program. They're very valuable. You don't want to lose these grafts. And so now we've decided we're going to go ahead and treat this. So we got to put a sheath up and over. In order to do that, we're going to use the pre-existing catheter put a stiffer wire, in this case still the floppy glide wire, it goes down the bypass, we then track the catheter over it, this is called using the catheter to do a wire exchange, uh, now we use a much stiffer wire which is largely protected by this catheter, when you follow it as it goes on down make sure it doesn't go in the side branches or get hung up on something. Uh, at that point in time, we can actually bring up a six French sheath. You want to oversize the sheath a little bit so that if you're using five French balloons, for example, I'd kind of like to have a six French sheath that can easily inject dye at the same time as positioning it. So that's it's been taken up and over the bifurcation. We're now going to use the catheter and wire to uh, advance down through the bypass graft. That heavy calcification, of course, is the native superficial femoral artery, which is occluded. Um, the wire actually is going down pretty nicely and going down what looks like the posterior tibial artery there. So, um, game plan is uh, that we're going to put and frequently use drug eluting balloons for these stenoses. Again, most stenoses and bypass grafts occur within the first 18 months. Um, here you can see the high grade stenosis distally. Or oh, demagged. Now we're looking at this application. There's another stenosis down there. So those are the two stenoses we, we've got to hit, and that is the mid-graft right behind the knee. Um, you will size the balloon to the bypass graft. So you can see the balloon doesn't look like a very big one. It's probably five millimeters in diameter. Again, uh, current vogue is to use a drug eluting balloon in a situation like this. When you blow them up, you've got to dwell it for usually a couple of minutes to let the drug be delivered. We're taking this down. And then we'll re-inject to see whether or not we've resolved that stenosis. And you expect to have a pretty good result in a situation like this. You can see it's almost completely resolved. Problem now is the distal anastomosis. And out of the same balloon, slightly smaller balloon, because it's going to have to go down into that posterior tibial artery. Uh, kind of limits how big a balloon you can actually put in there. We're using a longer balloon. And again, you always want to deflate these balloons and observe that they're fully deflated before you start pulling them back, particularly if you've got a stent on it. So the balloon's up. We're going to take the balloon down. And then we're going to inject some dye and see whether or not we get the same result in this. That was, again, when you see it, leave it up for a longer period of time. It's because you're using the drug eluting balloon. Uh, it's present there. Now we take it down, remove the balloon, or at least pull it back out of the field. Inject some dye. 
and see what it actually looks like. And again, pretty nice result. You can see it fell in retrograde um, up on to, towards the tibial perineal trunk and then going back down the perineal artery. See, there was also a little bit of stenosis in the groin. They actually opted to go ahead and uh, angioplasty the common femoral artery, but um, the, the most important part of this really was down the leg. Thank you for watching this.